Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the fifth round of um, Tata Steel Chess Tournament in... No, not in Vegan Z, because players yesterday they had the uh, day off, but today they play in Eindhoven. So they move to Eindhoven, they play in the uh, stadium of the famous um, football club, um, PSV Eindhoven. And uh, that's nice experience uh, for them. And uh, you can uh, listen to a lot of interviews of the uh, players. And one of them, very important interview for this game as well, is from Vishwanathan Anand. So feel free to click that link uh, and um, listen to what Vishy says about his game and about um, this tournament and of course of all of these young players who uh, you know try to uh, beat him and his ranking is 2758 so still one of the leading players um, in the world uh, and he won uh, this tournament for the first time in 1989 so that is 31 years ago uh, that's pretty impressive performance by Anand. And his opponent is Jeffrey Xiong uh, from USA. And his ranking is 2712. And he play as black. Warm welcome for both of players. And a little two cents about Jeffrey Xiong. Uh, he is very strong player. Uh, he is only 19 years old. But in September 2019, uh, he participated in the Chess World Cup and he managed to get to the quarterfinals by beating Anish Giri and Jan Krzysztof Duda. So uh, definitely very strong player. And he proved already in this tournament he is doing uh, pretty well. But now he has to stand against Vishwanathan Anand, a legend of the chess. So let's jump to the game. Anand open with e4, we have e6, d4, d5, knight c3, and a bishop to b4. So this is Vinaver uh, variation of the French defense. Uh, an interesting thing that Shimon Vinaver was a leading chess player from Poland, uh, but in 19th century. So his variation is from 19th century and still playing and it's still played by the best players in the world, uh, you know, uh, in 21st century. Pretty strong uh, opening for both sides, a lot of chances uh, and quite solid uh, opening as well. We have e5, knight e7 and a3 by Anand. We have bishop on c3 with check and b takes on c3. Uh, c5 by Jeffrey Xiong and Queen g4. This is main line, um, so attacking the, the king side. Uh, and here, black can play Queen c7, but um, not not really. It's it's popular uh, continuation, but uh, black doesn't look like they have a good scores against white uh, after Queen g7, Rook g8, and uh, Queen h7. Uh, Black has to look for some counterplay on the queen side, but without two pawns, um, it's very often um, losing for uh, for Black. So other variation would be castle on the king side, uh, but it's also very risky at, as this pawn is uh, very advanced and uh, uh, white also can get a very strong attack. For example, bishop on d3, knight b on c6, uh, queen h5 already threatening the checkmate, knight g6, uh, and really... Um, the the black uh, configuration was played by you know Magnus Carlsen and other strong players um, even Ivanchuk but uh, I Ivanchuk actually managed to win uh, but uh, definitely still better for white uh, so um, less popular variation would be king on f8 and that was played by Jeffrey Xiong. We have h4, um, quite popular attack played by, for example, Kasparov. Everything is, is okay here. And usually in, in this um, variation, 
Black tried to get some counterplay by playing queen on a5 and after bishop on d2, queen a4 and have quite interesting counterplay, uh, you know, exploring the and the queen side of uh, white pieces white has some attack uh, but have to be very careful uh, what to play next so um quite sharp position uh, french is usually not not famous of, of of sharp position but the players play on opposite sides so uh, usually um the the close position uh, turn to be uh, quite interesting uh, but here h5 by um, young grandmaster and queen d1 so uh, retreating with the queen and now we have b6 bishop g5 is the next move queen c7 unpinning because the knight was pinned so un unpinning the knight and we have rook on h3 uh, quite interesting uh, very strong move defending actually c3 and bringing the rook to the third rank so the rook can be you know uh, maybe in the future used for um, some attacks we have c on d4 c takes on d4 knight f5 very natural move for uh, by black uh, in french so this is a great outpost and um, this knight actually uh, keep a lot of pressure on d4 um, pawn uh, and also uh, this h5 move uh, preventing uh, white of playing g4 which is usually an issue in the french defense we have c3 so c3 actually defends d4 uh, because the uh, the rook um, defends c3 so that's this is why it's possible now we have bishop on a6 um, this move um, is good for black because um, they have very weak uh, i would say bad bishop on uh, c8 and usually in french defense uh, it's big issue for for black so exchanging um, this bishop for the white bishop uh, can be considered as the big success because usually a uh, white can bring the bishop on the d3 and on this diagonal uh, white could create a very very strong attack we have bishop on a6 uh, with tempo and knight on a6 so uh, the black you know uh, got the their mission done uh, but now we have knight e2 and black has to do something with this knight on a6 as this knight can't really uh, you know be moved uh, anywhere it takes a lot of time so uh, exchanging this light square bishop uh, definitely good but uh, it came with the price because knight uh, is moved to b8 uh, the move looks quite strange but um, but it's okay and um, French defense is rather uh, slower so black has time to uh, move the pieces to the you know correct uh, squares and make some tries of coordinating them uh, well we have knight on f4 so bringing the attacker to uh, you know h5 now we have g6 um, also very popular move uh, strengthening the the knight on f5 uh, but also uh, defending uh, h5 we have g4 so uh, anand already attacking and trying to destroy the uh, french defense we have h takes on g4 queen takes on g4 knight on d7 so bringing this knight um, to the game and we have rook on c1 so preparing c4 uh, which can be in this case uh, pretty dangerous but not yet and the, the move of course has to be prepared we have rook on g8 h5 uh, so uh, anand uh, you know creating the attack on the uh, side of the king and it looks quite scary with all of these pieces we have g takes on h5 and queen takes on h5 queen c4 so blocking this move uh, c4 and now we have knight on e2 so um, knight uh, retreating uh, making some space and now we have rook on c8 uh, rook f3 so now rook can you know attack the 
the f7 pawn f7 pawn is defended only by king so it's definitely a target uh, now uh, anand has to do something with this knight uh, we have rook on c6, a uh, pretty important move, and now you will see why. How deep is the, the, the this position, and how black deal with all of the uh, attacking moves uh, prepared by Anand. Uh, we have knight on g3, and if you want to, you know, exchange the, the knight, it's impossible because, of course, checkmate on f7. So that's uh, impossible to play. But this is why uh, rook on c6 uh, was very, very handy move. Uh, we have king on e8 and uh, king on e8 moving the king uh, out from this attack. Uh, and now we have knight on f5. E takes on f5, so it looks like the structure of the uh, black pawns is, uh, you know, destroyed, and white can easily win that. But now we have rook on f5 and rook c to g6. So uh, look at this. This is why um, French defense is a pretty solid option. Uh, it doesn't give so much opportunities to do some, you know, tactical. Um, tactical attacks but uh, it's very solid and it also gives quite some counterplay uh, we have king on d2 so uh, bringing some def extra defense to um, c3 pawn we have knight on f8 so relocating the knight to powerful e6 square now we have bishop e3 so anand move the bishop before it's gonna be attacked by the knight and knight e6 i as planned and here as you see there is nothing to do for for white the attack is um at this moment at least uh impossible to to be done so um anand is the up the pawn so he tried to exchange the queens um uh, he moved queen to e2 uh, and in this position, it looks like um, the key square to, to keep an eye on would be uh, b5, because this queen uh, can, uh, you know, go to b5 with check. And there are going to be very, very complicated positions here. For example, uh, white queen could, could make some, um, some moves and some mating ideas uh, can be found here. Uh, really dangerous situation so definitely black has to keep an eye on b5 and seems like queen a4 would be the move for example a uh, queen f3 uh, attacking the uh, the pawn on f7 and looks pretty sc scary uh, but rook g1 would be the interesting answer rook c2 uh, and queen a3 uh, and then even takes rook takes on f7 we would have queen a1 and black would have some uh, probably drawing chances maybe some mating ideas but um, probably not um, rook b7 trying to you know check mating so it's very close to checkmate uh, but queen e1 um, king d3 uh, queen f1 with check and then the uh, queen has to uh, retreat on uh, e2 uh, and queen b1 and um, that would be still playable for black uh, so i think that would be the most interesting uh, black would have some chances on the on the a file and um, yeah uh, it's probably the most um, interesting uh, option but let's back to the game so queen e2 was played by anand and now we have queen a2 check by jeffrey shong and rook c2 and in this position um, it's already very difficult now for for black probably the best continuation but still not really good would be um, queen on c4 and after exchanging the queens on uh, c4 we would have d5 uh, with some attack in the center knight c7 d6 uh, knight d5 and um, attack on a4 uh, rook g1 uh, a5 rook uh, a1 
uh, a takes on b6 uh, a takes on b6 and uh, king e2 and the position is still of course playable uh, by both sides but black would have some uh, serious problems uh, with these um, strong pawns in the center instead queen b1 was played by shong and uh, Okay, it keeps an eye on b5, but actually it led Anand um, to find the uh, very strong um, winning continuation for white. So um, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning continuation. It's not the tactic, but it makes your position stronger. And Anand, uh, in the interview, if you didn't watch it yet, uh, then maybe you're gonna have some troubles, but if you watch, you, you already know. Uh, but uh, Anand was very proud, and after this move, he was like pretty sure that he gonna win that game. So feel free to pause the video. While I enjoy my cup of tea, Okay, so the move played by Anand is a C4, and C4 destroys the position of black uh, completely, and the game continues. So we have rook on G4, uh, bringing the rook uh, to the to the fourth rank, and we have C takes on D5. Uh, and here this rook was brought to G4 because of the tactic, but this tactic actually. Uh, it's pretty impressive, uh, all the calculations still of, of um, young Jeffrey Xiong, but uh, rook takes on d4 with check, meets with bishop on d4, now queen takes on c2 check, so sacrificing temporarily the, the queen, uh, king of course has to take on c2, and now knight gets on d4 check. Uh, we had king d3, and knight on e2 taking um, the queen king e2 and what do we got in this position uh, well uh, jeffrey shang just exchanged most of the pieces and uh, white still has uh, extra pawn so uh, i'm not sure that was uh, really really great but he r didn't have anything better i think uh, so at least he, he make um, quite nice and impressive um, tactic. We have b5 by Jeffrey Xiong, king e3, centralizing the king, and a5. So Jeffrey Xiong tried to create the pass pawn. Uh, it would give him some, you know, that's the last uh, counterplay. But rook on f6 by uh, Vishwanathan Anand. We have rook g4, so getting the rook on the fourth rank, uh, because Anand already gonna play uh, rook b6, what he uh, played. And now Shong has the option push this pawn, uh, exchange the pawns, and uh, have the pawn on. Um, on the b4 defended by the rook on the fourth rank uh, but that, that's not the the best way of doing that rook a4 so still exchanging the pawns just a um, different way rook b5 rook a3 with check king e4 and now we have rook a2 attacking uh, the pawn on f2 uh, of course, this is very important. Extra pawn, so f4 played by Anand. We have a4, so um, you know, passed pawn must be pushed. And we have rook on b8 check. Uh, king d7, so trying to uh, bring the king to the center, closer to the rook. But we have rook on b7, and uh, king has to go back. To e8 uh, very sad for for the king but he has to protect uh, f7 pawn and now we have d6 and um, in this position actually uh, Jeffrey Xiong resigned the game as it's nothing he can do he can try uh, to push the pawn on a3 uh, but after king on f5 uh, rook f2 trying to you know attack the the pawn on f4 King g5 can be played, a2 by black, uh, rook a7, of course, uh, the pass pawn can be, have to be controlled, uh, rook g2, and then king f6 coming very close, 
Rook G6 uh, could be, um, the king could be checked, uh, but it's still not enough. King F5, Rook G2, uh, Rook A8 with check, King D7, and knight now king f6 can come to grab the pawn uh, of course rook f2 is uh, gonna be met with f5 and it seems like uh, black are in Zugzwang uh, because whatever move of course this pawn cannot be moved uh, this rook if is moved uh, then black gonna lose the pawn their last chance uh, if this rook is moved somewhere uh, then king can pick up the f7 pawn so uh, maybe king c6 uh, but it's still the same king f7 and even uh, with rook f5 check king e6 and rook uh, f2 uh, now white can easily play d7 and um, and yeah win the game there is no way to to defend so that's why uh, in this position uh, jeffrey shank um, you know resign and Vishwanathan Anand got his first win in uh, 2020 uh, Tata Steel Chess Masters uh, tournament. Congratulations to uh, Vishwanathan Anand. And of course, uh, as always, I put the link into the description for um, the study on the leeches to that game. So you can check the lines and enjoy yourself the winning um, and moves and some uh, extra lines and yeah if you like this video just push like if you don't like this video push on like and i'm waiting for the comments uh, which players you would like me to cover of the uh, tata steel chess tournament in 2020 thank you for watching and see you in the next one